Slope Rancher in the Grand Mesa area. A lot of people think of agriculture only in terms of, of growing crops or only in terms of food. But agriculture, I think, is very important to the culture of Western Colorado. You know, about 75% uh, of the land in Western Colorado is, is public land. Yet about 75% of the wildlife is on private land. And they're here because of the irrigated farmland, the irrigated cropland we have. If we dry up farmland, we're going to affect those, those issues of wildlife habitat, that open space that people in Western Colorado value. So I think it's very important, not just to us farmers, but to the people of Western Colorado as a whole, that we're able to maintain a viable irrigated agriculture in this part of the state. Another pressure that's occurring in Colorado is over energy development. Uh, Colorado, particularly in Western Colorado, has extraordinary energy resources. Uh, these are resources which are nationally in demand, perhaps even internationally in demand. And so a lot of people are looking to Colorado, particularly Western Colorado, to provide those resources. Today, oil and gas are highly visible on the Western Colorado landscape. Looming in the future is the potential for oil shale, projected as the highest water user in the energy sector. Water administration in the future is going to change as a result of increase, the increase in the oil and gas industry. And I think people would be very surprised if they went up on Piance Creek and saw how much land is no longer privately owned. It's owned by the bigger companies. And all of these companies either already have decreed augmentation plans and, and change of water rights or they're in, in court right now doing just that. We know that in terms of seniority that those are senior or could curtail some pretty significant uh, existing uses of water. For the time being, they're continuing to use those for agricultural purposes on the lands that they've been used historically. Uh, but we know ultimately they would think of converting those water rights to industrial uses. If that occurs, it, it is going to place a, a, a burden on our river. It's going to, to change the way we operate the, the river because that, that's another big use for water could become even a bigger use of water than, than municipal water is today in, in the West Slope. And if, if that occurs, uh, certainly agriculture is, is once again going to be a target for the energy company's need and, and something that we certainly need to be aware of is down the, down the road in the future. The energy uh, companies are paying good money for these senior uh, agricultural rights. We don't think it's because they want to be in the ranching business. People love to recreate on our lakes and our streams and our rivers. Hunting and fishing is a $10 billion industry in Colorado. And there's a lot of pressure on us as state leaders to protect the viability of the state's streams and rivers and lakes for what we call non-consumptive purposes. Recent water allocations have included recreation, a growing part of the state's economy. In 2001, the Colorado State Legislature recognized the value of recreation in the state of Colorado. Uh, they went and formulated legislation that would allow entities like the Upper Gunnison River Water Conservancy District to file for a recreational in-channel diversion. A recreational in-channel diversion is a non-consumptive water right, meaning that it does not consume any water, but it does establish a place in time for demanding a certain amount of water for recreational use. This means a lot. This improves our boating so much. For the beginner, intermediate, to improve your skills, it's safe, it's welcoming, there's no real challenges here and obstacles. So, you know, it's improved the whole season. The four major water needs, population growth, agriculture, energy development, as well as recreation and the environment, are under threat from increasing competition, climactic fluctuations, and the new challenges they bring. There are major uncertainties as to how much water we have and how much water we can use in the future. Uh, the first uncertainty is what's going to happen downstream for our energy industry, primarily oil shale. We really don't know how much water it will require because the technology to develop oil shale hasn't been proven up yet. A second major uncertainty is what's going to happen to our climate? There's a belief and a strong scientific consensus that man is accelerating a change in climate. We're making this earth warmer. 
Does warmer mean less precipitation? No, not necessarily. We may end up in a situation where the mountains of Colorado get more snow. We really don't know. But we do know a warmer world means that people will use more water. Crops use more water. Uh, people in their homes and their lawns will use more water. So we have demand uncertainties on the front range. We have demand uncertainties uh, in western Colorado for oil shale. Uh, we also know that climate is changing and where it's going to go, we don't know. Bill Trampy, a recognized and respected water leader, is a second generation rancher in the Gunnison Valley. He brings with him a rare blend of traditional ranching and visionary clarity. I'm sure that if we come into times of shortage, that uh, there'll be a demand for water on the front range that um, is going to curtail uses on the west slope, agricultural uses on the west slope. That's going to be very hard on west slope agriculture. And uh, the kind of agriculture that we're looking at here today, um, it's probably going to ruin. I hope we're smart enough to know and figure out how to prevent that happening in the Colorado River. Water in Colorado fluctuates with the climate and the seasons. It is a precious, finite resource besieged by a growing number of competing needs. As water is stretched thin, hard decisions must be made. Those decisions will determine the future of Colorado and the entire southwestern United States.